So when you're doing, a, let's say the evaluation of this is on, you're talking about traffic and content. What are the steps that you're taking that might be part of that spreadsheet, but there also could be subjective. So on the traffic side, we talked about looking at the trend in traffic. Now there's a bit more to that too. Just because something's going up right now doesn't mean it's necessarily a good buy. Uh, you, you want to think about where is that traffic coming from? I prefer to buy organic things with a lot of organic traffic because that's what I'm good at. And it's easy to verify with third party tools as well. And then on the, if it's increasing, decreasing, you want to look for large spikes in that traffic trend. So you can use stuff like Ahrefs to look at the organic traffic, SEM rush. Uh, I think they can be a couple of free searches a month. And then is it seasonal? Maybe the traffic is really spiking right now in December, January, but is that going to be sustainable? And are you going to miss out on, on that trend? And what's the split of the traffic too? So the traffic, is it all going to one page? If it is, then there's not as much diversity in there. And if that page gets out of date or gets hit or something in Google, then you're going to lose 10% of your revenue potentially. So that's something to look for. Is it spread out across a bunch of pages or is it all going to just a couple of pages? And you can look at that as like glass half full or empty too, because it may be an opportunity for you to add more content to the site. But if your if your plan is to just buy and hold, then you want to make sure that you're buying something with traffic that's going to a lot of different pages. And oh, I should add one more thing too on the geography as well. Maybe the site's US based, but it's is it getting actual US based traffic or mm -hmm. traffic from the country that you're targeting? Because I just had this happen recently with one of my sites. I had 70% of the traffic coming from English primary sites, but we had 30% from uh, a foreign country and they didn't approve us on the ad network because that 30% wasn't a country that their advertisers were interested in selling to. Their, their spend was going to be probably 30% worse. That's something that you really want to look out for because you can't monetize necessarily as well with traffic coming from other uh, geos. What are the other things that relate to the content that gets into the way that you value the site? So on the content side, uh, first thing that I like to do is look at the top pages and on the actual site. And I will read through the top three pages or so, and then also open up a couple random pages as well and read through those. Is there a uh, proper grammar? Is, is there good spelling? Was it written by a native English writer? Cause it's easy to tell if it's not an English native and that will eventually get hit. Is there content that actually answers the searchers query on there? So is it actually useful content or are they just regurgitating what everybody already knows? So if the content's looking good, next I wanna do a duplicate content check to see, is this original? You don't want to see it. <laughs> the post is just uh, straight up ripped from another blog or it's a spinner. They spun the article as a site like that. So that's something that I want to check for next. Uh, and a lot of people don't think about this one, but the images as well. Do they actually own the images and have citations going to them? If they don't, I want to ask the seller, okay, where did you get these images from? Send me the link, send me the website because that is the the number one legal issue I've found uh, with content sites is there's, there's these firms out there that will just go search for images and people don't actually own the image. So then they'll go send you a demand letter and say like, you owe me $5,000 for this image that my client took. So it's really important <laughs> that you have images that are either royalty free or you've got permission from the copyright owner and you're linking back to them. and. That's the biggest kind of legal risk I see in the content world. So if we're all good on that front, next I'm going to start looking at things like average word count. As long as it answers the query and it's it's matching up to what the competitors are writing, that's okay. You don't want to do is have uh, a 500 word post and then everybody that's ranking for that's got a 2000 word because eventually Google's going to catch up to you and realize like your content's not really that, that good on that front. And I see that as both an opportunity and as a risk as well. So you just want to think about that. If you don't have budget to do that, <laughs> then that could be a risk on the flip side. You, you say this is under monetized. What goes into that assessment? What are the ways that you're thinking about potentially turning that around? So on the monetization front, 
a great metric to look at would be the EPC. You can also look at if it's an advertising based site, look at the RPMs, look at the PMVs. So these are all just like ad networks that at the end of the day, sorry, ad metrics, at the end of the day, they're just trying to figure out what is the value of visitor or of an impression on the site or of a click site. EPMV is uh, earnings per thousand visitors. Uh, so that one's good because maybe you can manipulate RPMs by having like more ads on it. You can have that next button and a thousand page slideshow where you just have to see what that celebrity looks like right now. So you click through, but those aren't really as valuable as like a, a new visitor coming to the website and looking at an ad. That's a difference there. And then EPC is earnings per click. That was the last one. And this is more in the affiliate world. I'm trying to see what is this program earning because maybe there's a better program that we can replace it with, or maybe we can sell our own product on the website that has a uh, higher value. What you can do is you can look at on the affiliate side, you can look at some of the ad networks, affiliate networks and see what are people paying for or, or EPCs. And a lot of them report this actually in their mm -hmm. metrics. It's uh, something that you can actually go out and look and see what are the best affiliates in this area uh, or in this niche. And then you can go compare and see what is the site currently earning for EPC. You can go look at the public websites for sale, just calculate how much they're earning right now. Take their, take the revenue divided by their visitors and multiply by a thousand. And then you can get that EPMV metric or that RPM metric. So make a spreadsheet of all those and compare them in different niches. And then you can see, okay, like this guy's getting this much for RPM, maybe he's getting $20 RPM. This website's only getting $10 RPM. So theoretically, if I did what he was doing, switch to his ad network, maybe I can make what he's making there. I have my own perspective on link, link measurement and dynamics. So I love yours. And then all the other off page, you mentioned age, but what other things are you thinking about? There's a lot of things to look for there, but a couple of easy ones are like the anchor text. If they're over optimizing the anchor text, they've got a lot of exact match. Uh, I would say anything more than like five to ten percent exact match keywords in there, then they're starting to get risky. Even on the partial side of your seeing partial match keywords and no like branded keywords, no natural anchor text linking back to them. That can be an easy way for Google to come hit that with the penguin <laughs> update. The relevance of the links too. Am I getting a link on something that is topically relevant is really important. So I'll actually look at the blog post that's linking to it or the website that's linking to it. Is that website about the same topic as me? Is the article about the same topic as me? And is it actually relevant? Does it have organic traffic going to it? So just because the link is a DR or whatever, it doesn't mean it's relevant. And if you get too many irrelevant links, it can actually really hinder your progress. Looking at that relevance, looking at the diversity from the domain is uh, it all coming from one website. Like they've got a hundred links from one blog because the, those are not going to account as much as compared to hundred links from hundred different blogs that are all relevant. So those are things I'm looking for. Obviously, if they're using PBNs, which are private blog networks, then that's something that you can get penalized for as well. So I don't do any of that. And they can be hard to spot sometimes as you get more into it, you look at more sites, you can start to recognize the patterns, but people are getting really good at it. <laughs> so a couple of things to look for are, are they all hosted on the same IP blocks? Are they all kind of using the same WordPress theme or design? Are they publishing content that has nothing to do with your site? You can also look at the outgoing link profiles of the people linking to them and see, oh, wow, he's linking to a bunch of spam sites or a bunch of other kind of money sites or suspicious sites that I don't think are natural links. So you manage a lot of sites in these portfolios. How do you decide which ones to work on? That's a great question. And there's about four things I look at for making that decision. The first one is going to be, have we executed the thesis that we had on this website? So the thesis might have been the affiliate switch or the advertising switch, or maybe we're publishing or optimizing more content. So we want to make sure that, that we actually do the thing that we said we were going to do when we purchased the website. And that's going to be like the big win. I always look for a definite win on the website. If it's, ah, there's a bunch of little things I could do, but there's no real 
big way that I can increase the value, then it's probably going to be a pretty mediocre return for you. So I, I would really focus on what you're good at and what you can uh, potentially do on the site. Look for that big win. So number two on on how to allocate resources once we've done the the thesis is how passive is that website? If it's more passive, I might be more likely to hold on to it longer. If it's more active, it may require additional investment and I don't want to let it sit there if I know that the previous owner was publishing a lot on there. So that's a question, which also determines if I'm going to sell it or not too. Uh, third one is going to be like, have we covered the topical map of that website? So if we're, if we're, if we've got a website that's got 200 pages and we see 500 more pages of good keywords that we could potentially rank for, then we want to go ahead and continue to hold that site and execute and reinvest in that site. On the other hand, if you've maxed out, let's say you've already published all 300 pages in that world and there's nothing really else to talk about, it's a small niche, then you might want to consider stopping investing in it or selling that website if you've already executed everything you can on that. And then the last one is silly. Number four would just be, uh, sometimes I'm bored of it. I do think that there's a real issue of like burnout and uh, maybe I'm just like, I'm over this topic or I'm over this affiliate and it's, it's time to move on to something new and fresh. That's exciting.